wrongfully imprisoned atheist Mubarak Bala finally appears in court. On February 1st, nearly two years after his arrest in April 2020, Mubarak Bala appeared for the first time at the High Court of the, of the state of Kano, Nigeria. Mubarak, the president of the Humanist Association of Nigeria, was arrested for comparing the Prophet Muhammad to a uh, violent radical on a, in a Facebook post. Mubarak was illegally denied access to a lawyer for more than five months after his arrest. 15 months into his prison time, Bara, Bala was finally charged with call, causing a public disturbance under sections 210 and 114 of the Penal Code of the State of Kano. Bala was not present at the court when his charges were first read. Bala's arrest and lack of due process has been condemned by numerous international organizations, including the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. Humanists International insisted that, quote, all charges laid against Bala should be dropped immediately and unconditionally. Wole uh, Solinka, a Nobel Prize laureate from Nigeria, called Bala's arrest a sign of, quote, a plague of religious extremism that has encroached upon Nigeria. There's somebody in the lecture saying, isn't Nigeria a Christian country? No, a half. It's half Christian, half Islamic, right? And unfortunately for uh, Mubarak, Bala, he was on the Islamic side and he has a Muslim Well, actually, so that... he was originally in the state of Kaduna, which is a southern state that's Christian majority. And then yeah, but he, he has was... a Muslim background. Yeah, but he has a Muslim background and he was extradited to Kano State, which in Kano mm. State is one of the states where they have customary law, where you are um, given different forms of law depending on your religious background. And he is a former Muslim, so they uphold Sharia law in this state. So yeah. the penalty for blasphemy of a Muslim is death. And so Formally. there is the, and also... Well, no, for Muslims, it would be death in Nigeria as well. Um, oh, yeah. And um, then there's also the issue of the fact that he has openly apostatized from Islam, which is um, likely, you know, played into a lot of the illegal treatment that he has received at the hands of the state, including just blatantly disobeying court orders um, that he has to be presented before court, all of these things. Um, and... Uh, there is the possibility of technically it is could be argued that the customary law and Sharia law doesn't apply to him because he is not a Muslim any longer. He's a humanist. So I, um, based on the way that Humanist International wrote their article, it sounds like that's kind of the push that his lawyers might be trying to make for this. But wow. this is a significant milestone in the effort to free Mubar Bala. Because like I said, that he finally appeared in court after almost two years of being imprisoned. For over a year, he was illegally detained without no, charge. Yeah. And then they two they years, guys. Two years. Like you can't even defend yourself because they're just they're just keeping you without charging you. It's, what a clown show. What a fucking clown show. And Nigeria is supposed to be like one of the most serious countries in Africa as well. It's supposed to be leading the way in the economy and progress and everything. Like, how are you going to do this if this is how your legal system works, right? I mean, it doesn't work. Imagine the defense. Imagine the lawyers having to defend this him, not by saying like, dude, blasphemy is not a crime or like, what is this fucking law? Like the defense has to be like, he shouldn't be like executed because he's not a Muslim anymore. Basically having to endorse the already existing law like oh yeah this is all justified if he was a muslim but the law shouldn't apply to him just because he doesn't believe um, like unbelievable well i mean um, to be fair i don't think that's something that they actually believe i know that might that might I know, be how I'm they not, have I'm, to argue it i um, know i wasn't criticizing the lawyers i'm just saying criticizing the, the, the situation that they're in that this is the defense that they are forced to go with to just to save the man you know what i mean yeah and it's but crazy because um so if so there's the punishment under customary law which has the potential to be death and then there's the punishment under the other form of law which um i can't remember what it's called but the punishment for that is um a two-year jail sentence 
he has almost served a full sentence for this supposed quote unquote crime that he committed. Right. Um, so it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, every, everything about the entire way that this has been handled is a clear violation of his rights, um, his constitutional rights. And I'm glad that this, um, you know, it took a little while, but it started the case of Mubarak Bala started to get a lot of attention over the past few years, including a huge profile in the New York Times. There's profiles by the Associated Press that, you know, take him as a case study and then expound upon the issues that African um, atheists face at large. So that is getting more attention, which is so, so needed. That is a good thing. And um, I am really, you know, we can just really hope that um, this first step can lead to more quicker progress. And um, finally, um, I would like to plug um, one moment. Humanist International um, has a fund that they've started to, um, his defense fund. And I would like to promote it to people here. One second. So if you go to justgiving.com, you can find the campaign just called free Mubarak Bala, or I put the link in the live chat. Um, so, uh, you guys, Humanist International is basically, in my opinion, one of the most credible um, human secular organizations in the world. They do amazing work, especially with their humanist at risk program. And they have been one of the most hands on in terms of defending Mubarak Bala. And I go to Human International first to find out what the updates on him are. Um, so I would encourage you if you are able, if you feel um, willing, you know, and that won't be a financial burden to you to consider donating to Mubarak Bala's legal fund. Um, they have a 10,000 pound target and they've reached um, like 59% of their goal so far. So they still have, you know, a um, little less than halfway to go before they've reached their goal of this defense fund for Mubarak Bala. So consider that um, if you're so inclined. Um, and also, this is something that uh, I, I really care about the case of Mubarak Bala. And so I always try to bring you guys um, the updates on his case as soon as possible. Oh, look at this. Secular Seca is saying, I'm I'm, I'm going to donate now. I'm going to donate now. Wow. Thank you. Good. Aww. Thank you, guys. This is atheist taking care of each other. That's fantastic. Yes. Um, so, good. Like, good. I, think I mean, think about it. If this was a yeah, Christian, before. if he was a Christian, if he was a Christian and the fund was like, I don't know, 100,000 pounds, given the number of churches and the resources all these the Christians have, it would be like, it would be like this, like the funds would be available like this. Okay. If this was like a Christian in trouble in an Islamic part of Nigeria, I'm sure the funds will be available for help for his legal fund would be filled within like less than a, you know, less than a day. Right. So, you know, atheists need to like, I'm glad that we have institutions like this that are going after this, but the community support needs to pick up. Right. So that's, that's a good, yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah. And AJ is checking as well. Thank you guys. That's very nice of you. Yeah, I mean, think All about right. what the case of Sohail Arabi, like how much that international support really made a difference in changing the environment of his case. Like, you know, the pressure was able to help commute his death sentence to just several years imprisonment. And now he's currently at the moment <clears throat> released just in internal exile. So it's really important that atheists do care about each other internationally. Um, because oftentimes we can be very small in numbers. We're minorities within our own countries this international solidarity really can make a difference. Yeah, I mean, thank you, Susanna, for bringing these to our attention and doing the background, you know, research and everything. It's very, thank you for that. Um, oh, somebody's saying I'm new to this channel. Well, welcome here. We hope Hi. you stay. Blank you name know. is saying Atheist Republic Community. We're so proud of our community. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below.
because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.